what up book two chelsea's reads here so a little bit of a change of what i planned i plan to do like a little haul um a wrap up for the last couple weeks because um if you haven't been following my channel um i was every week doing a wrap up um because of quarantine um but that i was like oh i'll just just stop that because it was just getting too much um except for like i've only read like three books since i've stopped that so it's not really much of a wrap up video so we're going to prolong that a little bit longer because it's taking me forever to get the Raven Boys. Um, and I'm still going to do the best so far of the year because I think I have quite a few books I can showcase there. Um, yeah, and my little haul here has exploded into a gigantic haul. I don't know what happened. There's a lot of books, though. All right, so we're going to go through those. And bear with me. So first up, we have... All I Want for Christmas is a Vampire, The Secret Life of a Vampire, and Forbidden Nights of the Vampire, all by Carolyn Sparks. Now, all three of these books are actually um, books that I already owned. I just wanted to repurchase them because um, my original copies are all destroyed. Um, unfortunately, like as you can see, but they still have like this silver strip here. In the original publication, you would be able to open it and there's like a step back, like a sexy scene of this bat being a man and her, like, ravishing her. Um, but these reprints um, do not have that, uh, the step back on any of them anymore, but they still have the little strip that shows you that there used to be a step back and they removed it, which is unfortunate. So these are all part of the Love at Stake series. They are vampire romances, obviously. And they are about a group of good vampires that drink synthetic blood that are, is created in a lab, and they're all finding love. They're also battling this group of evil vampires called the Male Contents, um, and it gets really complicated as the series goes on. Originally, it was only supposed to be a three-book chiclet series, and um, it kind of exploded into 16 books. I really enjoy them. Like I said, these are some of my second and third copies. I believe it's my third copy of um, All I Want for Christmas. Um, they're really good, and like I said, I just wanted new, fresh spines, because mine were um, getting rough. So with my original copies, I think I'm going to remove the step back from them and insert them into these ones, because I really like the step backs. Alright, the next book that we got is Stuff Every Tea Lover Should Know by Candace Rose R Rardon. It literally is a little tea guide um, on the back. It highlights um, different topics such as tea bags versus loose leaf tea. Anatomy of a tea plant, tea families and their common varieties, types of teapots and how to use them, and tea traditions across the world. Um, this is pocket size, so it's about the size of my hand. Um, I hate the size of them, but I also have stuff every sushi lover should know and stuff every cannabis cannabiser should know. I don't know how to say that word. Um, but they are cute. I do enjoy tea, so I'm interested to see what this guide has to offer. The lettering is pretty small. Um, which is unfortunate, but I know it's cute. It got good reviews. It's Cork Publishing, and I really like them. So I am looking forward to this one. Now, again, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I've been on this cozy mystery buying kick, getting kick, because technically these are all on a um, Amazon wish list, and I'm part of a gifting group, and that's how they keep coming to me. So the cozy mystery trend has continued this time around and we have a pizza to die for and the missing dough both by chris cavender these are part of the pizza lover mysteries next we have a call for kelp which is by brie baker and it's part of the seaside cafe mystery series this was the one about the iced tea shop um although this looks like it's more of a bakery this time all the other ones, um, like there's Live and Let Chai, No Good Tea Goes Unpunished, but then there's also Tide and Punishment, which is more water. This is a call for kelp, um, but it's about a Everly Swan, who was a former ballerina. She got injured and had to go back to her small town on the East Coast, and yeah, people die. She solves it, you know, your typical cozy mystery formula. This is, I think, book or book three. And we have another cozy mystery, and this time it's P 
Pancakes and Corpses. It's the first book in the Paradale Cafe Mystery, and those are by Agatha Force Frost. Wow, that was a good case of dyslexia. Um, this is about Julia South. Uh, she is soon to be divorced, and now she is solving a murder. Um, it does look like it might be a self-published work or an indie-published work, small publisher, um, just by the graphic on the cover. It looks a little um, cheap. Uh, it's by Pink Tree Publishing. I've never heard of them. Um, and you can just tell by the large text in it. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. I got decent reviews. Uh, Agatha Frost has this Paradale Cafe series, and she also has another one, another cozy mystery series. But this one, I think, was higher rated, so I decided to start with this one. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. So in addition to this um, gifting group that I'm in, this month I am participating in Pages Promotions June 2020 Virtual Book Fest. You can look that up on Facebook, please. Um, and to do that, because we couldn't meet in person, they are showcasing indie and self-published authors, or small published authors, indie authors, um, and all of them have, of course, great deals on their books, so the next few books are all indie published and supported through that festival. First up is a novella by Kate Mc McNeil, and it's called Thistles. It is book one in the Pistol series. This is actually, um, you can get this ebook for free. It is an introduction to her series, her Pistols series. Um, Pistols is P-I-S-T-I-L because it's uh, the flower pistol, part of the flower. And I believe this is a female-led detective. Yes. See, uh, the ex-CIA officer. What's next for an ex-spy who didn't retire voluntarily? Is it truly what it appears to be on the surface? How long will it really last? Uh, Kate McNeil is a very sweet woman, um, and her newest book is in the series, Book 4, just came out. So I figured this um, this novella was rather cheap, so it was a good way to start off her series. Um, but the ebook of Thistles is free on Amazon. The next book I got from this virtual book fest is Threshold by Andy Lockwood. This is the story about a girl who gets an antique mirror. She thinks it's a nice heirloom and maybe there's some history behind it, but when she looks it up, she finds out nothing other than the previous owners of the mirror have all died. Um, Kate starts getting really exhausted and she thinks maybe her reflection is looking a little bit different when she's looking at it. She's starting to get all these nightmares. Um, and she's starting to question why her reflection isn't quite matching her own appearance. Andy Lockwood is known for very twisted, different, different kind of horror stories. So I'm really looking forward to see his take on this, like, mirror mythos. Because I really like, um, I really like the idea of mirrors, mirrors and horror. The next book that I got is another indie read. This one is... The Origin of the White Wind. It is by Xander Cross. This is the first book in the Atlas Dystopia Apocalyptica. Yeah, it's a long Atlas Dystopia Apocalyptica series. This is set first in 22nd century Tokyo. It's about demon a demon fox because um, the race has been taken over by shadow rulers uh, called the Dragon Hiroshi. Um, so. Hayati is our main character. He is on the run um, from the dragon Hiro Hi Hiroshi. Um, and he becomes a masked assassin, I guess. Caught in the riptide of a vicious war, can Hayati embrace the demon he has become to survive? And uh, uh, Xander's a really cool guy. You can find him on Facebook as well. Um, he also cosplays as his character, and he looks fantastic. Um, but it is very heavily put into Japanese myth, he claims, so I'm very excited to see how he played that out. It's a rather decent size for a first volume with um, about standard size text um, and a soft cover. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this one plays out. I was drawn by the anime looking cover like it looked like Inuasha, but it's a fox demon, not a dog. But The Origin of the White Wind by Xander Cross. The next book is another indie read. This one's Blood in the Rain by J.A. Bullen. 
Bielen. I don't know, Blood in the Rain. I think this is also a part of a series, if I'm not mistaken. Um, do you dare romance the devil who dwells in the dark? Do you dare embrace your sins, desires, and go deeper in Blood in the Rain? Um, it is supernatural. Forces both new and ancient seek to reclaim humanity's right to rule from the drudges of our darkest nightmares. While Harley, a young woman in search of her sister, she forms an impossible alliance with the Sin Eater, Maxwell, a man who's not human, monster, angel, or devil. Um, so it was a little bit of mystery, I think he said, supernatural, as well as um, some romance in there. He, again, seemed like a very nice man. Um, so I'm really looking forward to um, reading this series. He also has a Viking series out there that was intriguing. But this is the one that I went with first. This is a series, Chronicles of the Hunter series. This is book one, Blood in the Rain. Now this next one is the last indie read I bought, but not the last book that I got this week. I told you it was a giant haul. So this next book is Trust. It's the first book in the Narvin series, and it's by Jean Davis. This is a sci-fi adventure. Um, It's about... The, the Narvin, Anastasia Kazin, brings about the end of this war, um, and there's a lot of different alien words back here, um, and I think it's an enemies to lovers story, and she needs to make good choices because she's reckless, it'll bring the Narvin back to war. Yeah, everyone's happy with the changes on the home world. She's also on less than friendly terms with her deadly ex-partner. Van discovers Anastasia's only middle management. The council she works with has ambitious plans for the Narvin's military forces. How much is Van willing to sacrifice to keep the Narvin at peace? So, Jean is another delightful woman. It was great talking to her. She has a ton of other books out, but the, um, but trust. I think she just came out with the second book. It might be a trilogy. It's either a trilogy or there's either four of them. But she spoke very highly of this. I don't really read a lot of sci-fi uh, or aliens, but this one seemed pretty tra straightforward. A lot of goofy names on the back, but we'll see how we'll see how it goes. I am trusting Jean Davis. <laughs> the joke is really stupid. I'm so sorry. Um, so that was it for indie reads, but I did get a this graphic novel, and it's a small publisher, so it's not really an indie read, because um, it was distributed, and I think in major bookstores, but it is Anne Bonnie Volume 1, The Journey Begins. It is by Ye Tim Yates. Um, so Anne Bonnie is a real-life pirate, and in this book, she's more of a myth, I believe, I haven't read it yet. I was collecting the individual comics for a while until I um, abandoned our comic book store because I hated it. Um, but it has decent, pretty colorful artwork inside. It is about this young girl. Her name is Ariana, and she is searching for Anne Bonnie, who has disappeared. I know that there's elves in here. I think there's some magic. It's um, a little bit more fantastical than your typical pirate story. But this is only volume one, and I unfortunately don't think they ever continued the series. It is by Blue Juice Comics. I will have to look up and see it, um, where the series went. Because, like I said, the artwork is pretty cute from when I flipped through it. Um, it doesn't seem like there's like an overwhelming amount of text. Um, that's something that's really important to me in graphic novels. Like, I just get like, oof, with text, um, but this is, it looks cute, it's about a decent size comic, or graphic novel, um, and I really hope they continue it, because Anne Bonnie is one of my favorite real-life historical figures. So we finally made it to the final book of the week, and that is Camille Caudel and Rodin, Time Will Heal Everything, it is by Antoinette Le Normand, Roman, Normand, Romain, sorry, um, and it is, again, the story, I believe, of Camille Caudel and Augustus Rodin, um, who is, they were sculptors, um, you might know, like, the thinker is Rodin, this is the waltz in bronze, 
Um, I love their story. It's a very tragic love story. Um, kind of like a love story. Like, it's just a really sad story. Uh, I saw their exhibit once in the DIA, and it's kind of stuck with me. When I had first saw this book, I didn't realize it was, like, this shaped or this thin. But it does have, um, like, pictures of their artwork, which is, like, really the best way to do it, because you need to, like, see these pieces to be able to feel them. Here is um, Maturity, the second version. It's a whole page, so it's got gorgeous pictures in it. Um, a decent amount of text on every page, but I believe, like I said, it's called Time Will Heal Everything, and um, in the case of Camille Caudel, that was a lie. Um, so I believe it's just the story of these two artists um, paired with their, with her. I think it's more Claudel's um, artwork opposed to his. I don't even think I see the thinker in here. Um, and it is told basically through her brother's letters, um, the affair she had with Rodan and up to her tragic ending. Um, and that was it, guys. Like I said, it was a giant haul these last few weeks. And I still have at least two more books coming, maybe three. Yeah, actually, never mind. I think I have three or four after today on their way. Maybe I have a problem. I might go to Barnes & Noble this weekend as well. So July is going to have um, a fairly decent size of haul as well. <laughs> um, thank you for watching anyway. Like I said, we probably won't do a wrap up because I think I only have three, maybe four books I've read since I stopped my weeklies. Um, and that's just not worth anybody's time. So I'll just smush all that together with July, I think, depending on how much I read in July. Um, Thanks for watching. I never know how to end these guys. Once again, uh, if you have watched, make sure to hit like, drop a comment, and recommend some more cozy mysteries because I'm an addict. See you later.